Well, you might have read an article or heard of the climate term El Nino. Well, it appears that pattern is setting up now. So what exactly does that mean for our summer? And can we gauge how it'll impact the upcoming winter, even though none of us want to think about those cold temperatures? Meteorologist Ryan Halicki has been digging into this more for us. So, Ryan, what can you tell us? Yeah, today not a day where you really want to be thinking about winter, but uh, we're going to talk more about the summer. And the U.S. Climate Prediction Center issued an El Nino watch last month as signals began increasing for El Nino developing. And we're still seeing that this month they've raised the probability of El Nino conditions developing and continuing into the 2023-2024 winter to 90 percent. So I want to dive into what that may mean for our approaching summer season. In simplest terms, El Nino is the warming of the Pacific Ocean waters off the coast of South America. The warming has global implications on weather patterns. When you get sea surface temperature anomalies in that region, it will strongly impact um, deep tropical convection, which is thunderstorms, really deep thunderstorms that normally sit in the western Pacific and they'll move eastward. This sets up a domino effect across the globe. Dr. David DeWitt is the director of the U.S. Climate Prediction Center. The CPC issues long-range climate forecasts, including forecasting El Nino and La Nina conditions. The evolution of the past month certainly is uh, strongly along these lines of having um, an El Nino event uh, in the next couple of months. Currently, sea surface temperature anomalies are beginning to approach the El Nino threshold in the crucial area of the central Pacific. Forecasts show continued strengthening through the summer. The strength of the El Nino plays a crucial role in general impacts locally. Richard Redman is the lead forecaster for the Pittsburgh National Weather Service office. He's been watching this closely. One of the risks that we have with a weak to moderate El Nino in the summertime is a cooler than normal pattern across much of the United States. Weak to moderate conditions being reached in the summer is possible as strengthening continues. And even if that results in a cooler than average summer, it doesn't mean it's all cold. The temperature overall for a season is an average of the daytime highs and the nighttime lows. So if you had a high of 80 degrees and a low of 60 degrees every day of the summer, the average temperature would be 70. Obviously, there will be occasional warm and cooler extremes that can still give a similar average. Average. For example, if day one has a high of 65 and a low of 45, then day two has a high of 95 and a low of 75, the average for those two days would be 70. I would say temperature wise, we're going to be probably close to a normal summer with, like you said, intrusions of heat and humidity. At times we're going to be a little bit cooler, cooler nights, things like that. But I think the one thing that does stick out in the data is that there's a threat for a pretty dry summer. While it remains possible modeling doesn't yet have a good grasp on the strength of this El Nino event, Redmond is seeing strong correlations to drier than normal conditions in our region. The models are picking up on some of this, um, showing a drier than normal pattern. The historical data shows drier conditions in the Ohio Valley. And some of the um, uh, in, uh, experimental data from our drought uh, partners also shows threats of uh, drier than normal pattern in the upper Ohio Valley. Seeing some drier conditions, perhaps uh, those could be attributed to that developing El Nino. Now, summer impacts from El Nino events are typically less extreme. The bigger impacts in general uh, during the summer is a general suppression of the Atlantic hurricane season, but that doesn't always play out due to other variables. It's the winter impacts, though, that are usually much more pronounced. And tomorrow on First News at 5 and 6, we're going to dive deeper into what a developing El Nino could mean for the upcoming winter season that I don't think many of us want to think about right now.